there is a, a terror that kids will feel good about things, mm -hmm. that they will um, uh, simply be pleased with themselves and therefore not work hard. That comes from that Puritan ethic that represents itself still in um, the social conservatism that dominates our thinking about education and parenting. But in fact, most schools are not at all prepared to help kids feel good. Quite the contrary. There is such an emphasis on rigor and raising the bar and higher standards w that we end up with a lot of kids who are alternately bored and anxious because the education really isn't about helping them to feel like proficient thinkers who love learning. Instead, they have to memorize facts and practice skills in order to do well on tests. And that ends up being um, quite unengaging. And it has a number of destructive consequences. The more traditional and back-to-basics and test-oriented schooling is, the more kids lose interest in learning and in the particular topics they're learning, uh, the more superficial they're thinking, and the more the gap grows between the haves and the have-nots. A progressive education is often caricatured, as if it's just uh, do whatever makes you happy and uh, maybe you'll learn, maybe you won't, that's okay. But in fact, progressive education is far more challenging uh, and more engaging than traditional education because it involves bringing kids in on the process of making sense of the questions they have about themselves and the world. In a progressive school, uh, the kids are typically wrestling with real ideas, understanding um, ideas from the inside out, learning to think like scientists or like historians, um, as opposed to merely memorizing facts. And the kids are also engaged in thinking about how to think. So they end up making a lot of decisions about what they'll learn and how, and they do that not only individually, but as a community. They're rarely in a progressive school set against each other in a kind of contest. In the book, I try to explain why, given that research as well as anecdotal experience support the value of progressive education, it's so damn rare in our culture. The worst kind of education is the most popular. Um, and that's often true in private as well as public schools. And now the worst is becoming even worse in the name of raising standards and school reform, which is one of those sad ironies I try to explore in the book. One of my more playful coinages in the book is Bagudi, which stands for Better Get Used to It. And even though it sounds ridiculous when you talk about it explicitly, this is exactly the rationale that's provided for making little children do homework, uh, even though there's no research at all to support giving little kids, that is, in fact, kids under high school age, any homework ever. No data has ever supported the practice. And making young children take standardized tests and giving them grades and so on are all justified based on the theory that says... Uh, People are going to do unpleasant things to you later, so we'd better make you suffer now to prepare you. And, of course, it's ludicrous. It's almost laughable, except that it's so sad, and that that's exactly what's going on in, in much of the country. In fact, there are even some parents uh, who use that philosophy, even if they haven't been explicit about it to themselves, in denying kids things that make them happy. The essays in the book... Uh, deal with various topics in education that I think will be of use to parents as well as to educators. But I also have included a couple of articles specifically about parenting, um, including one that draws on research showing that when we raise our children in such a way that they feel only conditionally accepted, as if I have to earn my mom's or dad's approval, um, that that turns out to be very destructive. If kids feel like they're going to be punished through time out, which is conditional parenting to the maximum that says you literally have to go away until I approve of what you're doing again. Or the flip side, which is positive reinforcement, the constant good jobs that we dish out to make kids do what we want them to do, that kids end up feeling as if I'm only... Uh, a good person uh, when I'm impressive or well-behaved. And some, so a group of researchers uh, replicated an earlier experiment they had done a few years ago that confirmed 
that this ends up leading kids to feel not only resentful of their parents, but also less likely to feel a sense of ownership and pride in their own accomplishments. Uh, they end up feeling uh, a sense of being controlled from the inside. They are perhaps self-disciplined, as I discuss in another one of the essays in the book, uh, but being self-disciplined is not the same thing as having a sense of autonomy or a sense of um, personal integrity where I can make decisions about who I am and what I want to do. These days, you know, when you politicians or corporate executives or journalists talk about school reform and the need to improve education, uh, they typically cast it in terms of the United States beating its enemies, although they don't always use the word enemies. They do typically use words like competitiveness in the global economy. It doesn't matter whether it's George W. Bush or Barack Obama, they're interchangeable in reducing the education of our children to what will bring in the most profits to American corporations uh, as compared to their counterparts in other countries. So I kind of take this apart in the book and look at um, just how destructive and how, how narrow and rancid this model of education is, what, it does to, what it's saying about our children and other people's children. If we care so much about how American kids are doing compared to their counterparts in India or China on um, standardized tests, put aside the fact that standardized tests are lousy measures of anything that matters intellectually, uh, what we're saying is that we want children who live in other countries to do badly, not to learn well. And I think that is an intellectually and morally bankrupt position. So if we're going to find reasons to educate our children well, it shouldn't just be about economics. And it sure as hell shouldn't be about having them triumph over other children.